Okay, welcome to this video. In this one, we're going to take a look at how to work out a determinant. What is it? How can you find determinants of variance sizes? So a determinant is a scalar. It's just a number, could be positive, could be negative, could be zero, and it's derived from a square matrix, a single number derived from an entire matrix. Um, now, the determinant of m would be written with m with the modulus signs either side of it even though it can be a negative number so here's an example of m and here is how we would write the determinant of m note that we don't bother writing squares uh, straight sides and curved brackets as well there's no point in that it's just enough to have the straight line sides so let's start with the definition of a uh, two by two determinant. That's the easy case to look at. So let's write out um, a general 2 by 2 just using symbols. We'll have A, B, C, D written inside our straight line sides indicates a determinant. It's simply AD minus BC. Okay, so that's the falling diagonal, the leading diagonal is also called, minus the rising diagonal multiplied together. Very simple, very simple. And that is how you can just look at and evaluate a 2 by 2 determinant. So for our example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 times 4 is 4, subtract off a 2 times 3 is 6, and so that's going to give us minus 2 is the determinant. Okay, so a, a 3 by 3 determinant is um, going to be a bit more work. But what we do is, when we have a 3 by 3 determinant, we evaluate it by breaking it up into a number um, up to three smaller determinants, each of which is a two by two. And for that, we have our definition for immediate evaluation. So we break up bigger determinants into little ones and then evaluate them. Now I'm going to write out something here that's like a chessboard, but instead of black and white, I have pluses and minuses. You'll see why in a moment. The thing to notice though, is that we alternate plus minus plus minus along each row and each column in this three by three grid. Okay, so now let's uh, work out a three by three determinant. Again, I will just use general symbols A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Right, now first I have to choose a row or a column. I'm going to choose this top row for the first example. And I'm gonna work along this row and I'm gonna start with the A symbol. Now I go and I look on my chart and I see that there's a plus sign in that in that slot of my grid. That means I put down plus A. And now what I do is I ignore the whole row and the whole column that A is in and I look at the remaining four numbers and I write a little determinant just made out of those guys in the same order they appear. So EF um, is going to be uh, in my main determinant there, and HI. Those are the remaining four guys in the same order they appear. Now, B, the next term, that has a minus sign according to my chart. So I will put in minus B and multiply it by, again, a smaller two by two determinant. The one I get if I delete the row and the column with B in it and look at the remaining guys, D, F, G, I, and I just I just uh, write those guys out um, in the same order they appear as a small two by two determinant. Finally, there's C. C appears with a plus sign according to my chart. Um, so I need to put down plus C and I need to multiply by, well, we delete the row and column with C in it and we just see the remaining determinant D, E, um, G, H. So uh, I simply imagine that that row and column was not there and then that's what uh, the determinant becomes. And then of course, those two by two determinants, I can just write down what they are using my uh, uh, rule of multiplying down the diagonal and of subtracting the anti-diagonal. Okay, there we are. So that is uh, in general what a three by three uh, determinant evaluates to. But it's not the only way to do it. Let's write it out again. And this time, choose. Uh, let's choose a column and a different one. Let's choose this column. I'm also allowed to work down this. So I would start with B as my first term. 
and I'd delete the row and column with it in, and I'd see what I, are the remaining terms and write them D, F, G, I. Except I've forgotten something. Uh, there's a minus sign attached to that particular entry, so that should actually have been minus B. All right, and then similarly plus E, and I delete the row and column, which has E in it, and then I just make a two by two determinant from, in this case, it would be the corner elements, A, C, G, I. And then finally, minus H, and delete the row and column with H in it, make a two by two determinant, determinant of what's left, A, C, D, F. Okay, and of course, I could then write out these two by two determinants explicitly. But the point is, it will get give me the same answer. Let's do an example and see why we would choose one method or the other. So here are just some random numbers I'm making up. Let's stick that in, it's three by three. First off, let's work along the top row and as we, uh, as we did in our first example. So that's going to be three. Uh, let's put in the full determinant here and then minus one. And again, the determinant I get by excluding the top row and middle column and then plus two uh, that's going to be 7, 0, 5, minus 1. And I can go ahead and I can work out explicitly what this comes out at, as you can see I'm doing here. And in fact, it will be 12 plus 20 minus 14, and it comes out as 18. So there we are, we've worked out a 3 by 3. But we could have done it in a different way. Let's say we went along this bottom row. That's fine. So then it will be 5 and I will be left with one, two, zero, four for my mini determinant, and then the next element along, a minus sign, and it was a minus number anyway, minus minus one, that's gonna be three, two, seven, four. Let's just see how we've done that, three, two, seven, four, by deleting the bottom row and middle column of that. Now what about the uh, third element here? Well, we actually have a zero plus zero times some determinant, I don't even care what that is because it's been multiplied by zero. That's the beauty of it. So I've got five into four minus zero, and then we're going to have four threes are 12 minus 14. So that's going to give us 20 minus two is 18. Same answer as before. Okay, what about if we have even bigger determinants than our three by three example there? If we, have, uh, if we go bigger still, we, for example, are four by four, we're just going to break it up into a number of three by threes, and each of those would have to be broken up into two by twos, lots of work. So here we are, here's a general four by four. We um, are going to uh, expand it along a row or column. Let's say we want to expand it along this row, for example, and we'll take in turn A, B, C, D. And we'll need to know what sign to use. So here's our checkerboard or our chessboard pattern of pluses and minuses just extend it out now to a four by four. And you can see the rule here is that if you like, if the row number plus the column number is an even number, then there's gonna be a plus sign. And if it's odd, it's gonna be a minus sign. You can confirm that for yourself. Look at this one. It's gonna be at row two and column three, and that's five, and so that's a minus. That's one way to remember it, or just draw it out. Anyway, we're going to use that rule, so we go ahead and we write plus a, and now we need to do the entire three by three determinant that we get when we delete the row and column with A in it. So we just write out uh, that little square block that we see is quite easy to copy across. And now we're gonna have minus B and we need to delete the row and column and then uh, transcribe across the elements that are left as a three by three. Just being careful not to make any slips. And you see that we're going to continue to so let's delete this just to be completely explicit i'll finish the job off so i think i hope it's obvious what we're doing we're on to plus c and now we're going to just have e f h i j l and m n p and then finally minus d um, onto what we get if we delete the top row and rightmost column which is left over then e f g i j k m n Oh, there we are. That's how we handle a four by four. Each of these three by threes would then have to be evaluated and so on. So a lot of work. And that's the end of the video.